sitting here watching my wife cut the grass at the pond. <laughs> So even in my beautiful lawn, I'm still gonna have some weeds pop up. See them? We gotta take care of them. Oh, great. <laughs> if you need any fertilizer, just call me. <laughs> if I could get this damn camera to stay here, I could shoot a video for you guys. <laughs> oh my gosh, stay still. Morning, what are we doing today, Doc? Today, I'm gonna talk about weeds because I keep getting a ton of comments um, about what type of weed killer, what can I use for my lawn to kill weeds. So I'm gonna show you a little secret trick, number one. Number two, make sure you uh, have the lawn guides available. I say that at the beginning of every video, the lawn guides are up, two million people have used them. And the reason why people like them is we don't ask for any information. You don't get a bunch of emails. There's a Bermuda website, there's a Zoysia website, and there's a cool grass website. Go to freelawncareguide.com. There's calendars, everything, use them. Uh, and before I go, I almost never ask this, but push that little like button. <laughs> it does help out our videos, so uh, smash that like button. And if you don't like it, smash the dislike button. I'm too old to care anymore. <laughs> so either way. Anyways, let's get going. Okay, I'm gonna show you a secret little trick. And what's that trick? I'm gonna put a link in the description maybe I'll put it in the description or maybe I actually build a page and on that page I'm gonna have a link and it's gonna say here's where you go when you go to their website the do my own people the pest control people there's a secret little place on there that their experts have actually gone through and said people have asked your questions in other words I've got clover in my Bermuda what can I use and they'll actually answer that question and show you links to products so it's a really cool, so there's a search bar at the top of it. When you go there, put um, whatever weed in Bermuda, whatever weed in Zoysia. So you're gonna put something like uh, Poana in Bermuda, Poana in Zoysia, whatever it is. And you'll see a big long list of previous discussions with recommendations. It's a great tool. Now, a lot of those products are going to be uh, more in the, prof not professional line, but they're typically products that you have to mix up in either a hose bottle or a spray tank. I get that. If you have a broadleaf problem, I'll link to a cheap D, uh, 2D4, 2,4-D, I mean, that product is a really good broadleaf weed killer. And you can put it on any lawn except for St. Augustine. I believe but read the label it's about one ounce per 1,000 square feet you mix it up you can put it in a tank sprayer you can put it in a hose end bottle but if you're starting to have broadleaf weeds it's a good killer for it and it's really cheap so I'll put a link um, down on that page to that uh, 2 4 diamine so what am I doing today I want to show you my 10 day forecast 0% chance of rain today man starting on like Sunday it's like after Sunday all next week it's 50% chance of rain every single day so most of these broadleaf weed killers and most of these weed killers too you got to understand they're going to tell you don't put it down when you have a chance of rain in 24 hours the next thing is is you're going to put it down while the weed is actively growing so when do you apply most of these weed killers number one wait look at your 10-day forecast and look for a spot in there that's going to be warm and sunny that's when you're going to apply it so on a warmer day when you get up finally get up into the 60s and 70s you don't have any rain for at least 24 to 48 hours that's when you're going to put down your weed killer that's how it's most effective now we deal with a bunch of different weeds on this farm property um, because of all the fields and everything like i have carolina horse nettle here the world's most obnoxious brutal weed that ever existed i mean every single square inch of that weed has thorns on it you're up in the garden pulling weeds and you grab one of them you're like oh my gosh <laughs> man it's just horrible so this year I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna try and knock down some of this Carolina horse nettle around here, but man, that stuff is nasty. I don't have it in the lawns, but up in those fields I have it. I also have a problem with wild Bermuda. And man, Bermuda is so aggressive. What I'm doing, the reason why I put down nitrogen, which I know don't put down any fertilizers here, is I'm pushing all of my clover, my rye, and everything else I got going, and I'm gonna keep it like at 12 inches up there at least, so that I can choke out some of this um, maybe some of this Bermuda. Good luck choking out Bermuda and some of this other weed. So anyways, let's get going. And uh, again, I'll put those links down below. Make sure you push that like button. 
and uh, make sure you're subscribed. Oh, by the way, uh, I talked about my new channel that's coming out. Uh, I'm going to start working on that next month. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you guys through with all the crap that's going on in the world, cyber attacks. Um, the FBI and the cyber security said it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. So I think that's probably a good sign that you should have some preparedness, at least, um, you know, a week or two weeks full of, you know, for food. And how are you going to, what happens if your power goes down for one to two weeks? I've been through that. So what I'll do is I'll show you what we're doing out here on the property. Um, I'm sort of doing this for you guys, but also doing it for myself and my family where we could actually close our gates if we had to. And we could live out here for a year. That includes the solar that's sitting over there. I talked about that earlier. Um, I gave you a sneak peek of that the other day. The solar programs that we're doing out here, we're doing something completely different, a whole bunch of different stuff. So, uh, well, anyways, I guess before I cut this, I gotta let it dry off and warm up. So I'm not gonna real mow this till a little bit later. I'm gonna go out, let's go look at the pond front. So that's all annual ryegrass. And then below this is dormant Bermuda. So once we hit the temperatures where our Bermuda starts to wake up, then we'll really take this down low. Right now we're cutting this tall. We're leaving it at like three inches, but it goes all the way through over in here. Now over in this area, over in here, um, I, I have got ryegrass, I've got clover, there's turnips over in here. But the other day on my last video, I put down 50 pounds of annual ryegrass seed. My goal is one of the rules on this farm property is we don't allow any raw dirt. So we don't till anything anymore. Um, we don't have any raw dirt. So. I put down a bunch of extra ryegrass seed in here, man, and I'm starting to cut this. I cut this with a toe behind so John could actually come in here and cut this with a zero turn. But man, that's just looking great. That really is. Let me give you, I'm going to hop over real quick to the cabin. If you didn't watch it in the last video, let me just show you one of the things that we're doing over here with this solar program. Um, I'm going to have three levels, actually four levels of backup power on this property. And they're going to sort of go incrementally in size. A small one that's portable that I can use, a medium, and then the large system. We're going to have solar panels all along this roof up here on the front and back side of this. We'll have well over 4,000 watts of solar power coming in. And let me go in here and show you this. So you'll have to excuse the mess in here. But this is... I believe I'm one of the first people on YouTube to actually buy their own system, not get it for free. And I'm one of the few that actually has a three stack battery system. So this is the EcoFlow Ultra. And I'll be doing a, a full review on this and showing you guys this, but this thing is a badass system. So this is the inverter head up here. And then I have one, two, and three. Most people just have this and this. I have additional batteries. Now I think you can go up to five in one stack. What's really cool about the way I have this system set up is this is normally on the outside of your house. This is one of the generator plugs. I plug this system into here and then that huge 2224 cable runs back to the house and I can actually run my whole house on this system over here, seven, it's over 7,000 7, watts of power that it puts off. So it's putting off, so that thing right there is putting off the same amount of power as my gas generator. So basically I'm gonna have four different, four different means of backup power out here. I have the gas generator that plugs in over next to the house. I'll have this big system and then I'll have a moderate system and a small system, little portable system. So I'm gonna go through all those things with you on this new channel over there. So uh, next month, make sure you're subscribed. I will send out um, a notification, let you know when that channel's up. And uh, anyways. Oh, so I got the fat dog with me. <laughs> uh, it's cold up here. So I'm just waiting before I cut this grass. I wanted to come up real quick and let you know that if you guys... Oh, great. <laughs> if you need any fertilizer, just call me. <laughs> Good Lord. Um, if you guys have a garden, the one thing I don't want you to do is I do not want you to leave your garden in plain dirt. What I do is I buy white clover seed. And I'll put a link on that page, and if I forget to put it, remind me. But I put white clover seed. We put white clover seed everywhere on this property. Clover will stay in here all season long. So 100% of the time, we have clover. Now, this acts as a natural ground cover, sort of a mulch. It shades the soil, keeps it from drying out. And, of course, 
clover is nitrogen fixing. Now, there's kind of a myth out there that clover adds nitrogen to your soil, and that's really not what it does. There's little nodules on the roots, and those nodules actually convert nitrogen into a usable form for your plant. That's what happens. So it's not that clover shoots nitrogen into the soil, it converts nitrogen into a usable form. So if you have any kind of garden, a lot of people go out and they'll till up their whole garden and leave it all dirt. Don't do that. If you do do that, immediately come back with clover and put clover out. It's a great, we put it everywhere on this property. As an example, this field over here is rye, clover, and turnip. Up there in that field, same thing. And then further up in that old corn field, same thing. We constantly have roots in the ground. That's one of the rules you want to live by is always have roots in the ground. So today I'm cutting with uh, the McLean 2024 Low Cut Series. One of the reasons why I like McLean is it's so simple. It's the same basic design for over 50 years. It's one of the only real mowers made that's 100% made in the United States. That's going to become an issue, I believe, over the next year or two. You're going to start to see a lot of problems with supply chains in between places like China and the United States. And if there is an issue over there, that's going to be a big problem. So my UTV, John Deere, made in the United States. My riding mower, John Deere, made in the United States. Real mower, McLean, made in the USA. Um, if I get a little tractor up here, same thing. It's going to be made really for parts. That's going to be the problem. Um, parts are going to start to be an issue. Now, McLean, one of the good things about McLean, because they've kept the same basic design series for years and years, you can go anywhere and get the parts. You can go on eBay. You can go on Amazon. So if you need any parts, you can basically order anything you want. The low cut series, LC low cut series, will cut down to like a 16th of an inch, but it only goes up to about an inch and a half. That's the low cut series. And if you're going to keep a lawn short, like a Bermuda or Zoysia, perfect. If you want to go taller, get the GR series. The GR series will cut about three quarters of an inch up to about two inches. Um, Honda or Briggs, I've gotten to the point now, I've got so many Briggs engines. I used to be a Honda guy, only guy. The Briggs engines I've had now, I've got them on my, um, my aerator. I've had that thing for four years. It never fails to start. Runs like a champ. On my cutter, my brush cutter, my toe behind brush cutter, it's a Briggs. Now this one has a Briggs. So I've had some really, really good experience with Briggs. Years and years ago, not so much, but nowadays, these Briggs engines are really coming up and giving Honda a run for their money. My water pumps, I still run Hondas on all my water pumps just because that's what they come with. But uh, anyways, it's still a little bit wet, still a little bit cold, but I need to get this done because I got a bunch of other stuff I gotta do. Well, now I'm warming up. <laughs> so as you can see, I've actually got quite a few weeds popping up here. I'm just not going to worry about it right now. I'm not going to worry about it until I have an effective window in my in my forecast to treat them, which is going to be sunny temperatures in the high 60s, lower 70s. Perfect time to do that. Will I hurt this perennial rye? Maybe a little bit, but Remember, I didn't put down pre-emergent this year simply because it's a brand new lawn and I'm undecided what's going to go on here. So I figured 
I just deal with a few weeds. The next thing I'll kind of address is when you decide that you're going to enter into the low cut lawn life, if you hit a period where you get a lot of rain and you haven't been able to cut your grass for a while, when you cut your grass real heavy, like more than one third, you have to go down and cut it half, you are going to get some yellowing areas and people say, should I bump it up? No, I want you to go ahead and cut it down, especially during the spring. During the spring, don't worry about it. Keep that grass short. I keep saying that. Unfortunately, when you enter the lawn care life of shortcut grass, you're going to be cutting your grass twice as much as your neighbor. <laughs> that just lets it grow and cuts it every two weeks or whatever. You're going to be cutting your grass a lot. You have to stay on when you do a low cut grass. It's just a fact of life. You've got to stay on that. You're going to have to come out here every three or four days and typically cut your grass. So I'm happy with that. So now the wife was complaining about her steps. So I said, well, why don't you go cut the pond? She said, I'll cut the pond. I used to cut the grass all the time. <laughs> so we're going to see. We're going to see if she goes out there and cuts that. And if she does cut it, do I have to go back out and fix that? I'm sitting <laughs> sitting here watching my wife cut the grass at the pond <laughs> anyways she's cleaning out the mower and just leaving it right in the middle of the lawn so there's a whole bunch of clumps up there I'm not gonna complain I'm not gonna say anything so I'm gonna go get my John Deere I've never run my John Deere down here I'm not gonna cut it I'm just gonna keep it high and just sort of try and cut up all these extra clippings but don't critique the wife lesson number one <laughs> all right so here's my problem i got all this stuff and that needs to be that needs to be chopped up and moved better than I thought. I don't want to shut this off because the battery's low. But uh so the wife cut this with the uh ego and man there was so many clippings on it. So I came back and I just kept the mower up pretty high but man I'll tell you what that looks pretty darn good. And the one thing I was able to do too I was able to get these real rough areas because I was able to get it up real high. So I was able to take all that down. Pretty soon, this whole pond front and that natural area over there will look like this. And I plan to put some Bermuda over there, so this should be amazing, dude. This will be a huge, I didn't realize it, this is going to be a huge yard. Because if you look at it, I mean, it goes all the way down here. It goes all the way in front of the house, and then it goes all the way over to the cabin and next to the cabin. So, it's, it's going to be a huge yard. <laughs> but we're trying to get it to the point where we can John can cut it with a zero turn or the John Deere so all right so just a couple quick reminders most of you especially in the southern region region should have your pre-emergent being put down now pretty close to this uh, what else you should have your first round part of our jumpstart program you should have a round of PGF complete excuse me <laughs> PGF balance the 10 10 10 light coat of that the same time you put out your pre-emergent put out a light coat of PGF balance let your lawn wake up slowly and naturally once you get a strong green lawn once you start to see that that's when you're going to scalp and then you're going to hit it with PGF complete and that's the 16 4 8 so this is all covered in the lawn guides we cover all that then maybe in about three or four weeks um, I would come back out with a light coat of the liquid pre-emergent just as a secondary, because I'm telling you, your first round of pre-emergent typically, because of rains, because of distribution, doesn't always get all those weeds. Here's a little bit different. Here I have a broadleaf weed coming up 
this is a cool season grass technically um so yeah i gotta hit this with some uh i'll probably just use some 24d on it but anyways guys long day uh hit subscribe hit that like button and uh i'll talk to you later Duh. Yeah.